This video is brought to you by Hostinger. More about it later in the video. What if I told you guys is an easy way to create your own food ordering system with zero commissions, no hidden fees, and very low setup cost. Yes, there is a system that exists and it's exactly what I set up for my dad around two years ago at the start of this pandemic. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys step-by-step step how to set it up for yourself, for your own restaurant or cafe, or if you're a freelancer or maybe a future freelancer, you can offer this as a service for other restaurants around your area and make money. So I'm gonna go through exactly how it works right now. So right now, I just wanna quickly show you guys how it all works. So this is the website that I'm gonna show you how to create, but it could be any website. Uh, from like a Japanese restaurant, a Vietnamese restaurant, or if you're a small cafe selling coffee, it's still gonna work. So over here, we can click on see menu and order. And that's gonna load up the ordering page where your customers can select and browse the items. So for example, they might want some spring rolls and they can also select the number of pieces. So your menu is actually very customizable. So you can set like different sizes, different pieces. Um, you could add different variations as well as toppings and things like that. So let's say for example, they wanna add it to cart. And that has been added on the top right over here. And then we can also click on, let's say for example, a pizza. You can click on, let's say a small pizza and we can select the crust. So this is all uh, the things that you can actually set in yourself. So for example, the toppings, we might add extra cheese and maybe some prawns and they can add that to cart. So once that is added to cart, then you can click over here and you can also offer deliveries as well. So you can set in specific delivery zones uh, with a minimum order, as well as the fee for that specific area. And here is the cart over here on the right-hand side. So the customer will just put in their contact details and they can select the ordering method, whether that be a delivery uh, where they can add in their address or that could be like a pickup. And let's click on save. And for the available time, people can order for as soon as possible or they can also order uh, for later as well, right? So you can set that time here. I'm gonna select as soon as possible, click on save. And then for the payment method, they can pay via cash or card at your premises, or you can also set it up so you can accept payments online directly uh, via credit card or PayPal. So people will pay and all they need to do is come and collect their order. So once the customer is ready to place the order, they can click on save over here first and place the pickup order now. So as you can see, that's a live notification to your tablet or mobile, uh, which you can click into. And over here, you can review that order. So you can review it. For example, you might have something that's not available. Then you can click on the reject button on the right hand side. Or if it is available and everything's good to go, click on accept. And then you can set the time to like 20 minutes and accept that order. So once that order is accepted, it's gonna print at your printer, which I'll show you guys how to set it up later in this video. And on your screen over here, your customers will actually get a order confirmation. So that is all in real time. So this is really cool because it's gonna save your staff a ton of time because sometimes if people are calling up to place a takeaway order, you can also make mistakes because the pronunciation might be wrong or you might type it wrongly into your point of sale machine. But with this, they actually place the order online and everything's done here so they can confirm it manually themselves. And yeah, it's just gonna save a ton of time and a ton of uh, money, especially in like this day and age where inflation and rising cost of goods, it's really important to have your own sort of ordering system. Um, otherwise, you know, a lot of other platforms actually charge a commission. And hopefully with this system and website, you'll be able to save thousands of dollars every single month. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys step-by-step step how to create it. So without much further ado, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what we need and how much everything's gonna cost. So before we actually get started, I wanna explain exactly what we need and how much everything is gonna cost. So the first thing you'll need is a website. So to create a website, you'll need a domain name and you'll need a hosting account. So your domain name is basically your website's address, for example, yourname.com or yourrestaurantname.com. So that generally costs between 10 to $15 every single year, but I'll show you guys how to get that for free in this tutorial. The second thing you'll need is the hosting account. So hosting is basically a place where your website can live. So it's like a storage for your website that allows anyone to access your website all around the world 24 seven. And that generally costs between two to $5 every single month, depending on the plan that you choose. The third thing you'll need is WordPress. So WordPress is the open source website platform 
that we're going to create our website on. So it's completely free and they also have thousands of different themes and templates that you can choose from. They also have a drag and drop builder so you can actually create your website without needing any technical knowledge. The fourth thing we'll need is Gloria Food. So Gloria Food is the commission free ordering platform that I personally use for my dad's restaurant and it's amazing. So to accept cash on delivery or cash or card at your store premises, then it's gonna be completely free. So they won't charge you any commission on that. Now the catch is that if you do wanna accept card, like credit card online or PayPal online, then it is $29 per month. So generally I do have that set up because it's just a lot more efficient if they pay online and they just come and collect it, but it's up to you how you wanna operate it. Um, you can do it with just cash on delivery or card at your store. Um, you don't have to enable that option, but if you do wanna enable it, it's $29 plus the payment gateway fee, which is sort of like the credit card processing fee, which is between 1.5 to 3%, depending on your country. So for Australia, I know that it's around 1.75%, but for the United States, it's around 2.9%. So that is like the, the credit card uh, payment processing fees. So that is pretty much unavoidable because with a lot of, if you have like a card machine in your restaurant, they generally charge a merchant fee as well. If you're using like square point of sale, I think they charge, you know, 1.9% in Australia. So with that said, in Gloria Food, you can actually add the credit card processing fee and charge that to your customer's total bill. So for example, if Stripe is charging you 1.75%, then you can add that credit card processing fee to your customer, uh, for example, 1.75 and it's gonna add and apply it to the total shopping cart value uh, to the orders. So not only can you actually do that, but if you have like a Sunday holiday surcharge, you can also customize that percentage as well. So Gloria Food is really customizable and it really depends on what you feel is best and what is most suitable for your business. So the starting cost of your own food ordering website is gonna be around less than $40 to get started per year. If you do want the sort of processing payments online, then it's an extra $29 per month. So before I get started, I wanna answer a few questions. So one of the questions that a lot of people ask me is, can you use WooCommerce to create a tutorial? Now, yes, there are plugins that add food ordering functionality, but it's not gonna be as dynamic. So for example, you can't accept or reject orders in real time, and there's no sort of dedicated app to check your incoming orders and things like that. So it's just not as good. So that's why I didn't use it or create a video on that. And second question is how much can I charge restaurants for this? So generally I'd say at least a thousand dollars and up to maybe $3,000. It really depends on what type of website, how many pages they want to create. And are you doing the photography for them? Also, do you provide training and support? Are you going to enter their menu into Gloria Food for them and things like that? So that is pretty much it. Now, if you have any questions, then you can drop it in the comment section below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. But without much further ado, we're gonna get started right now. So to get started, we'll need to purchase our domain name and hosting first. And luckily we can get that at the same place. So below this video, there's a link which you can actually click on or you can open up your browser and just type in Hogan and then chua.com forward slash hosting and then click on enter. So that's basically gonna redirect you to Hostinger and Hostinger is the sponsor for this video. So they're one of the top rated web hosts today where they have some of the most affordable web hosting plans. So as you can see, you can get started from around $3 per month, which basically includes a free domain name. And they also have uh, six different data centers all around the world. So basically you can choose a data center which is closest to your audience. That means a faster loading website. So to get started, we can click on get started over here, or you can click on hosting on the top and then click on web hosting. Because sometimes the homepage may change. So I wanna make sure that everyone um, gets on the same page. So we can click on get started over here, which is gonna scroll you down over here. So they have three different plans, which you can choose from. They have the single shared, premium shared and business shared. Personally, I do recommend the premium shared because you have a little bit more resources um, in terms of performance, as well as you can host up to 100 websites. So what that basically means is that, as you can see over here with the single shared plan, you can only host one website, uh, whereas the premium shared and business shared plans, you can host up to 100 websites. So that basically means you can create your website, your friend's website, and maybe your client's website, all hosted under one account. 
and basically you can save a lot of money like that, right? And you also get a little bit of performance boost um, if you go for the premium shared and a little bit more performance if you go for the business shared, as well as you also get your free domain name included uh, whereas the single shared plan, you don't get that included. So this one does renew at a lower rate, but I think this one is probably the best deal for most people. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on select. So over here, you can choose the period that you wanna go for. Um, generally, I do recommend 12 months or more. If you go for a longer term, then you're gonna save a little bit more on the renewal rates. So for example, on the 48 month, it renews at $7, whereas this one renews at $9. But since this is a tutorial, I'm just going to get the 12 month plan and that's around $36, right? So if you're an existing business, you may want to go for a longer term since you probably have a website, you know, longer for 12 months anyway, but that really depends on what you personally want. So here we can create your account. Uh, you can log in with a, uh, your Gmail account or a Facebook account. Um, I'm just going to put in my email. So 91 tutorials at gmail.com. And over here, you can select a payment method, credit card, PayPal, or even cryptocurrency. And over here, we can scroll down. And for the coupon code, I do have a special coupon code for you guys. So we can type in Hogan and then CHUA. And hopefully that's gonna save you a little bit more on that as well. So that is a few dollars, but it might be a little bit more if you go for the longer term. And over here, I'm gonna put in my credit card details. I'm just gonna pause the video for a bit. So once you've put in your credit card details, then you can click on submit secure payments and that's just going to process. So the next thing is to create a password for your hosting your accounts. And then I'm just going to click on confirm. And then I'm going to click on start now. And I'm creating a website for myself. And it's going to be a business a professional website creator. Okay, and then over here, we're gonna install WordPress. So we're gonna click on select. And then over here, we're gonna put in your email. So basically this is to log into your WordPress uh, website, right? So put in your email and then set in a password and then click on continue. Okay, so it's basically gonna install WordPress for us. And over here, it's gonna ask you to install some pre-created templates. Um, I'll show you guys how to install it a little bit later. So I'm gonna click on skip, I don't need a template on the bottom over here. And because we've selected the premium shared hosting plan, we can claim a free domain name. So click on select, and then we're gonna choose a domain name. So this one could be like food ordering demo. I'm gonna choose the extension. So this one, let's just do .com and see if that is available and click on search. If it's not available, then we may need to adjust the desired domain name. Okay, so that one is available. So what we're gonna do is click on continue. And over here, we can choose the server location. So as I said before, this is one of the benefits of hosting R. You can choose a server location which is closest to your audience. So for example, I might choose uh, Singapore because it's closest to Australia and then I'm gonna click on change, okay? And then over here, just click on finish setup. So over here, you'll need to enter in your uh, details. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in the country. I'm just gonna put personal next. And then I'm just gonna fill out this information over here. So I'm gonna pause the video. Okay, so once you've done that, then click on finish registration. So that has taken just a few minutes to get your website ready. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on manage WordPress over here. So this is basically your hosting is uh, control panel and this is where you manage your website. So what we're gonna do first of all, before we log into WordPress is we're gonna install our SSL certificate. So if you actually scroll down over here, okay? Scroll down to speed and security, the SSL certificate, click on setup. Basically what this is is the lock icon for your website. So it makes your website secure and able to accept credit card and things like that. So all websites will need an SSL certificate. So make sure to just install that, okay? And that's gonna be installed and uh, after a few minutes. So we're gonna click on close for that. So while we wait for that to load, we're gonna go back over here, okay? 
and scroll down and we can click on view our website. Okay, so this is the front end of your website. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna log into our website. So what we can do is um, go over here and then type in forward slash WP dash admin and then click on enter. So what that is gonna do is gonna take you to the login page for your website. So what I do recommend is actually um, bookmarking this to your browser. So whenever you wanna log in to your website, you wanna edit something, then you can just click on that uh, bookmark, okay? So what we're gonna do is just enter in the email and password that you set in earlier. So mine is 91tutorials at gmail.com. And then I'm gonna put my password that I set in and then click on login. So that's gonna log in to the back end of my WordPress uh, website. So if we click over here on the top and click on visit site, that's gonna take us to the front and what the customers see. So don't worry about you know what it looks like right now because we haven't added our theme and our templates. Let's just click on refresh, okay? And we can go back to our dashboard by hovering over here and click on dashboard. You can actually log out of your website by hovering on the top over here. So once you've finished making changes to your website, then you can log out um, of your website. And whenever you wanna come back to edit your website, then you'll need to log back in through that URL. So your website.com forward slash WP dash admin, which you should have bookmarked, okay? The back end of your website is basically what you see. And as you can see, it's a little bit cluttered. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close and minimize some of these things over here. So there are a few things that I wanna go through before we start importing the template. And that is gonna be the settings and the permalink settings. So hover over settings and then click on permalinks. What we wanna make sure is we wanna set the permalink structure to post name, okay? So what that basically means is that when we create like pages or post, then we want the title of that post to be in the URL. So you don't want it to be like question mark p equals one, two, three or some other one. Uh, this is just for search engine optimization purposes to rank your website in Google and things like that, okay? So click on save changes on the bottom here and then you're pretty much good to go. So over here, what we could do is we're gonna go to appearance and then click on themes, okay? So themes is basically the appearance of your website and what it looks like. Right, so right now we actually have the defaults uh, theme by WordPress, so the 2022 theme. So what we're gonna do is click on add new and we're gonna add a new theme. So the theme that we're gonna add is the Astra theme. Now, if you don't actually see that over here, what I do recommend is just typing in Astra on the search bar and then click on enter. And this is the one that we want to upload. Okay, so what we're gonna do is click on install and then once that is installed, we wanna activate our theme and then click on activate. Once that theme has been activated, I'm just gonna close the top over here, these things over here, okay? Then you should see thank you for installing Astra. So we can click on get started now. Now, some cases you might not see this message. So what you can do is you can go to over here appearance. So click on that and then you can go to the Astra options and over here, you'll see 180 starter templates. And then we can click on install importer plugin. Okay, so that's basically gonna do the same thing. Um, that's only if you don't see that, thank you for installing Astra message. Um, but if you do, just click on get started. And then that's basically going to install the starter template plugin. Okay, so you'll be able to import all these pre-created templates um, and it just makes it a lot easier to create your website. Okay, so over here, they do have a video to show you guys how to get started, but I'm gonna show you guys anyway. So just click on build your website now. So we're gonna select the page builder. For this tutorial, we're gonna be using the Elementor page builder. So it's one of the most popular and free page builders out there. So we're gonna select that one. And over here, now sometimes it may not actually show the templates. So it's like not loaded yet. So what we can actually do is we can click on back on the bottom here. Okay, so you can click on back. All right, let's just click on back for now and back again. Okay, and we can go back to the appearance and then let's go to the starter templates. Say okay, so click on starter templates and then it's gonna load up. Okay, so that's only if you don't see it, then click on back um, and then go back to your dashboard section 
and then click on starter templates and then it should load up. Okay, so if you do have any questions, drop it in the comment section below. So over here, we can choose a template which is related to a restaurant. So over here on business, click on restaurants. And then over here, we do have a few premium ones, which if you do get the essential bundle, you can um, use, but you don't really need to use that. The free ones are pretty much good enough. So we're going to choose this one over here, the deli restaurants. There are also other ones which you can choose like the Italian restaurants or barbecue restaurant, but you can really configure it with the page builder and change the layout and design anyway. We're going to get started just with uh, this one over here. So it really depends. So I'm just going to get click on it. And the next thing that you need to do is upload a logo. So if you don't have a logo yet, then you can create it on places like canva.com or you can hire a freelancer on fiverr.com. I'll leave the link in the description for that. Uh, but generally you can click on that if you do have a, a logo already. So you can click on it and we can upload a file from our computer. Okay, so I'm gonna select my folder and I've already created a logo. So I've created two different versions, a dark version, which is a like a, with black text and one with white text. Okay, so sometimes you might need both. So I'm gonna upload both of them. And for this one, I'm gonna choose the white version. Okay, so this is a PNG file, which is a transparent file. And we're gonna select the size. And as you can see, that's good, right? If you uploaded the black one, then it's not gonna be really visible. So that's why we need both versions and then we can click on continue. So a really great thing about the Astra starter templates is that they have this option where you can choose the different color schemes. And basically it makes it really easy for people to have a really nice website up and running within minutes. So we can select uh, like a pink one and it's gonna change the entire scheme. So as you can see, like this one changes to a little bit pink. Um, you can change this one if you want to. Uh, it really depends on you. You can update the colors uh, individually for each section later on, but this one just gives you a quick start. So let's just click on this one, the orange one, and you can also choose some fonts as well. So this is some uh, pre-matched fonts that you can choose from. So that just makes it a lot easier. So it really depends on the style of your website and the vibe of your restaurant as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna click on, select the default one and click on continue. So over here, you can also put in your name and email address if you do want to receive updates. Uh, that's up to you, but for this tutorial, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to click on Submit and Build Website. Okay, so that is pretty much it uh, for your website. Let's click on View Website, and hopefully you should have a full website ready to go. All right, so this is the website right now. So right now I'm gonna show you the basics of how to edit things and change images and things like that as well. Then I'll go through how to add your food ordering system with Gloria Food. So over here, this is the front end of the website and on the top over here, we can click edit with Elementor. So this is a page builder. So click on edit with Elementor. Okay, so this one is, we're just gonna click on got it. So sometimes it may redirect you to like another page or something like that um, to sign up for a newsletter for Elementor or anything like that. You can actually just click on skip if you don't want to enter in your information and try to come back over here. And basically sometimes you'll need to come back over here and just click on edit with Elementor again um, if you don't want to sign up and things like that. So once you've actually turned on Elementor, then we can edit our page. So over here on the left, you have all these different elements which you can just click on and drag and put it into your website. So if you wanna edit stuff, you can click on the module. So for example, this is a text module. Instead of good place and good food, we could just do like new for 2020 to change the text, right? And you can also edit the text over here on the left-hand side as well. Um, you can change the alignment. You can click on style. So style is basically where you can change the color the typography, like the, the size and the font, as well as you can add shadows and things like that. The advanced tab is where you can change the positioning of that module. Okay, so I'll walk you through that a little bit later. So same thing over here, if you wanna edit this text over here, so we could do like uh, food ordering, oops, website, and we can click on the text on the bottom. We could do like create your very own 
commission, free food ordering system. Okay, so it's very simple to edit the text. Now, if you don't want um, something which has been pre-created, for example, you may want to delete this uh, element over here, scroll down or this little line here, you can right click it and we can delete it, right? Right click it and delete it, okay? So if you want to change the background image, if you hover over here, um, on the top over here, you can click on these six dot icon and this is to edit the entire section, right? So click on that and we can edit the background image. So over here, we can click on style and to change the background image, we can click on the background type. So right now it's the classic mode, which is just the image. You can set it to like a gradient or you can upload a YouTube video if you want to as well. And you can also do like a slider here, which is gonna click on choose image and we're gonna upload files, select files. So I'm just gonna upload a image that I created earlier. So website images. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna just upload all these images first. So I don't have to keep on uploading as I'm building the website. So I'm gonna click on open. Okay, so I'm gonna select my hero image. So the size of my hero image, I've set it to around 2000 pixels in, in width and around 1100 in height. Okay, so that's like a similar size that you probably want it to, to be. Okay, you don't want it to be too big or too small because if it's too big, then it's gonna take a long time for it to load. If it's too small, then it's gonna be blurry, okay? So insert media, and then I have my image on the back, okay? So as you can see, my image is kind of bright, but right now on the page, it's kind of dark. So the reason for that is because in the template, they have applied a background overlay color. So you can click on background overlay color, and I'm gonna turn down the opacity a little bit to uh, pull it down to maybe like 0.0. 0.2 or something like that. So basically with the opacity, it's very helpful sometimes because if you put like white text on top of it, then it might not be very, very visible. If you up the opacity uh, with like the like a background overlay, then it's gonna be a little bit more visible, right? It makes the text pop out a little bit more. But in this case, it's just too dark. So I'm gonna turn it down to 0.2. You can also change the um, color overlay if you want to as well, right? But right now it's black and that's pretty good. So we're gonna leave it as that. So the only thing is uh, once you've made the changes, you can click on update. So what I wanna show you guys is how to change or move the text, like change the positioning a little bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do is because, you know, this is like covering the, the food, I wanna move it and align it to the left-hand side a little bit. So we can click on the text module, all right? And we can go to the content and we can click on the alignment, hopefully, and that's gonna move it to the left-hand side. Same thing for the other one, move that to the left. Same thing for the bottom one. Let's see, we go to style, okay, move that to the left. Okay, so as you can see, um, when you move it to the left, there is still a lot of spacing there. That is probably because there is a some padding or margin, okay? So margin and padding is virtually like the space. So I'm just gonna delete you know, that one because that's from the template and remove that. You can also go to style and we're gonna increase the size of that font a little bit because it's not very visible. So 22, I think it's pretty good. Okay, like that. So the other thing that I wanna do is, let's just update it first. I want to sort of, um, as you can see, there's a little bit more of spacing on the left-hand side and spacing on the right-hand side. I wanna move it to the left a little bit for that layout. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna click on the uh, section, click on layouts, and I'm gonna increase the width a little bit. Okay, so as you can see, it's uh, 920. I'm gonna increase it to 1300, okay? So it goes to the edge a little bit more, okay? And click on update that. And then I'm also gonna click on preview changes on the bottom here, okay, to see what that actually looks like. Okay, so I think that's pretty good, okay? And the other thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that for the rest of the layouts to move it to the side a little bit as well. So we're gonna go back over here. And what we wanna do is I wanna go and click on the icon on the top left, okay? And then click on the site settings. And then go to the settings over here and click on layouts. 
and I'm gonna increase the content width to the same, so 1,300, right? So basically this is, this is just for design purposes. Um, generally, you do wanna keep the alignments as aligned as possible. Um, it just makes it look better. Click on update, and then we can go back to our editor and things like that, okay? So that is pretty much it to align it. So if you wanna change the image for other sections, we can click on it and we can click on choose image and upload a, another image. For example, this one over here, just upload that and you can change the image. So you can also adjust the spacing uh, or the column spacing. So for example, this is a two column uh, section. So when you hover over the middle, you can click on it and you can adjust the spacing like that as well. So you can adjust that. Uh, you can also right click and you can delete things as well. If you wanna add additional modules, for example, you wanna add in a video, maybe perhaps, let's say, maybe you don't want this image over here, you can perhaps you can delete it and you can add a video and just drag it into that section and you can click into that uh, module, right? And you can upload your own YouTube video and you can have your video there as well. So another thing that I wanna show you guys is let's say for example, you wanna add, let's just update it first. We can go back, uh, click over here, the nine dot icon, okay? And that's gonna take you back to the elements. So for example, if you wanna add a button, you can drag it below that and we can link that button to any page. So I'm gonna show you guys how to edit the buttons later on when we add our ordering system. So I'm just gonna leave that as is. So you can also delete entire sections. So for example, if you don't like the layouts of this, so you can actually click on the cross and that's gonna delete the section. You can also click on Control or Command Z and that's gonna undo the changes that you just uh, made. Uh, I'm just gonna delete that. Now let's say if you wanna add a, a new section, for example, you wanna add maybe a map or something on the bottom, you can click on plus and you can select the uh, column structure. For example, I just want just one column or you can select two columns, that depends on you. So we can click this one over here and let's click on the icon on the top over here. And we're gonna look for the map. So search for the widget, so type in MAP, map, and we're gonna add a Google map in there. Okay, so you can set in the address of your restaurants and also set in the zoom as well. And then you have a map for your restaurant. All right, so click on update. So you can also do another way, uh, which I think is really cool, which you can click on this starter template icon. So click on that. And this is if you wanna uh, import entire pages, but I don't want to. I just wanna import like a block, right? Or like a section. So these are pre-created sections. So this makes it a lot easier for you to design the website because they've all been pre-created for you. So it gives you a lot of idea and inspiration and you don't have to design that layout again, okay? So for example, let's just say, uh, maybe we wanna add a FAQ section. So maybe something like this one over here, okay? On the left, click on that and we can click on import the block, all right? And that's gonna import the FAQ section. So you can click into the individual modules and you can edit the text or like the question and put the answer there and you're pretty much good to go. So we can click on update. So make sure to update whenever you make some changes and we can go back over here. Another really important thing is that once you've created your layout, you wanna make sure that uh, not only that layout looks good on your desktop, but also good on tablet and on mobile. So on the left, uh, on the bottom left over here, click on responsive mode. And then here you can set it to tablet. So it shows you what your website looks like on tablet, okay? So for example, you can adjust uh, what it actually looks like on tablet as well. So as you can see on the tablet version, the spacing has been added again, mainly because of the template that we imported. So let's click back into that and click on advanced. And then we're gonna delete that uh, margin, okay, and fix that, okay? So you can also update the image of that section. So click on the section again, and click on style, and then click on choose image. So what I've done is I've actually created a specific hero image for tablet devices only. So this is the one over here. 
So I've actually set the size to around 1000 pixels in width times about 1500 in height and I'm going to insert media. Okay. So you can set in a specific image for tablets. Um, sometimes you may need to edit that. Okay. So I've edited that and it looks a little bit better. So we can also adjust the background uh, opacity a little bit more like that to make it a little bit more visible. You can also click into that text, right? And click on style and add a little text shadow to sort of make that pop a little bit more. So we can click on the color, make color a little bit darker, right? So as you can see that shadow has been added and that text pops out a little bit better and makes it more visible to your visitors. So something like that. And then you can click on update. So you can do the same for the rest of the text as well. And you want to make sure again for the mobile devices, it is also um, set properly as well. So click on that module and then let's just delete the pre-selected margin. Okay. That's looking better. And I'm also going to adjust the size of that text a little bit smaller as well. Uh, it's just too big. So I might do like 16 and let's just check the tablet one. Is it too big? Okay. That's maybe a little bit too big. So let's just change it to maybe 20. Okay. Let's click back onto the mobile and I'm going to upload and change the image as well. So click on the section and then click choose image and then click on the uh, mobile one, which I pre-created. So this one for the size I've done 500 pixels in width times about a thousand insert media. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of spacing on the top and on the bottom as well. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to advanced and I'm going to add a little bit of padding on the top. So what we're going to do is maybe change it to instead of 60, you can do 100. So that padding basically adds spacing. Okay. So for the bottom, let's just do maybe 100 as well. Okay. Something like that. Okay. So I think that is okay for now. I might make it just a little bit more so you can see that image a little bit more. So 120, I might just reduce that one a little bit to 90. Okay. So I'm just going to leave that for now. Okay. So I think that's good for now. Um, I'll edit it a little bit later on if we need to, because I'm going to be adding a few more buttons as well. So we're just going to click on update for now. And then we're going to click on the three icons on the top over here and just view that page. All right. So that is just like the very basics of how to use the builder and how to make sure it's responsive. So I'm going to go through a few more things a little bit later on after we've added in our Glora food ordering system. So to add in our Glora food ordering system, what we can do is go back to our dashboard section. So to set up Glora food, we're going to hover over plugins and just click on that. So we're going to search for a plugin. So we're going to click on add new on the top. And then over here on the right hand side, we're going to type in Gloria food and then hit on enter. And then this is the plugin that we're going to install. So the restaurant menu by Gloria food and then click on install now and then we'll activate it. So now click on activate. So once that has been activated, then on the left here, uh, we're going to scroll down a little bit. You'll see Gloria food, right? So we can just click on that and then we can set up our uh, Gloria food account. So just click on connect. Okay. So if you don't have an account yet, then we're going to create one now. So basically for the restaurant name, I'm just going to call it food ordering demo. So obviously have your restaurant name or your client's restaurant name. So for the email, I'm just going to type in my email address, first name, last name, and set in your password. So if you are setting up for a client, then you can select this checkbox over here and then click on create an account. So if you do have an account already that you can log into existing accounts. So over here, click on create an account. So I'm just going to click on don't share. So over here we have everything checked. So then we're here, we're going to click on continue and then we're going to start the setup. So basically this is going to redirect you to the Glora food com website. So if you do need to log in in the future to edit your menus, uh, to edit your time or whatever you need to do, then you'll be able to go to gloriafood.com and then you'll need to log in with your 
email as well as your password that you set in before. So over here, I'm gonna put in the restaurant phone number. So you need to put in the country code as well as the area code, I believe. So I'm just gonna put in a, just a dummy phone number for now. So that's, okay, for the country, I'm gonna select Australia. So select your country and then put in Victoria, Melbourne, three, one, maybe 3000. One, two, three, Queens Street. And then we're gonna do next. Okay, so here you'll need to select the area, okay, the exact sort of uh, shop. Okay, let's just say for example, it's over here. Okay, this is just an example. And then we can click on next. And then over here, do you have a real website domain name. So we're going to click on yes, because we have set up our website over here. So what we need to do is to just select that and then put in your URL. So just copy that. Okay. So just copy it um, until .com. You don't need to copy the rest of that. Paste it into here. Okay. And then click on next. So for the restaurant cuisine, then you can select yours. Uh, for example, maybe burger and fast food. Okay, so this doesn't really matter too much. It's just gonna pre-populate the menu later on, but you can change it, it doesn't really matter. Once you've selected that, click on next, and then you'll need to activate your email. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate my email. So over here, you just need to click on validate email address. So once you've validated your email address, then you can click on next. And over here, it's gonna ask you, do you accept pickup from your location? So I'm gonna select yes for this, click on next. And then for food delivery, we're gonna click on yes. Um, if you don't do it, then you can select no, click on next. So here we can add another zone. So for zone one, we could do like a circle radius. So for example, we could drag it out to maybe something like three kilometers like that. And here we can do the minimum amount that you have to order for that zone. So let's just say $25 and the delivery fee maybe $3. So don't worry, the currency is in Euro right now, but we can change that later. So we can click on save and we can add another zone. So this one could be the same one, but a bigger radius, or you can also do a shape. So perhaps there is a specific area which is sort of harder to get to, then you can set that in. So you can click it one time and click it like that. And then you can just sort of create the shape, right? So you can zoom in as well. Uh, let's just see if we can zoom out like that and then just close it off like that, right? So that could be zone two and the minimum amounts here could be maybe $35 and delivery fee maybe $5 and then click on save. So that is pretty much it for the delivery zones. So here we can click on next. So you can also set in table reservations. So I think this is very, very useful because the customer will also get a real time notification that the table has been accepted. And that is really, really awesome. So here I'm just gonna click on yes. And then you can click on settings. So here you have the minimum guest two, maximum guest uh, eight people. So you can increase the limits. So maybe if it's like a lot of guests, you don't want them to book through the booking system. You want them to call because you need to organize the tables and things like that. Then you can do that or you can just set the limit to maybe like 50 people so they can book as many as they want, okay? So here they have minimum uh, time in advance, 15 minutes, I think that is good. Uh, maximum time, eight days, and when guests are late, hold table for, fi for 15 minutes. So you can also allow them to pre-order their food when booking the table um, by enabling this checkbox over here, okay? So you click on next. And with Gloria Food, you can also offer dine-in ordering. So basically if you click on yes, then you'll be able to print out a QR code, which you can sort of uh, place on your table and people can scan it on their phone. And once they scan it on their phone, it will load up the menu and on the table, you'll probably need like a table number. So people can put in the table number and then people can order as well as pay by just dining and sitting down at your restaurant, like without actually, you know, paying at the register. Okay, so that is kind of useful as well. You can also click on this to learn how it actually works. 
So I'm just gonna click on no for this example. Okay, we're gonna click on next. And here we can set in our opening hours. So this is very, very flexible. So let's for, for example, we add hours and let's just say we are only open on weekdays. So we can just disable that like that. And we could do something like, you know, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. So maybe that's your lunch trading hours. So we can click on save and then you can add new hours. So then we can add the dinner hours. So for example, we could do like maybe 5 p.m. to around 10 p.m. Okay, and then click on save. Right, so you can edit it individually as well. Um, you can add hours and you can just do something like this as well. So maybe Saturday you open all day, uh, 10 to 10, 11 to 10, like that. So it's very customizable, so you can play around with those settings. And you can also add in a special day or a holiday. For example, you might be closed during Christmas or something like that, so then you can add that in and then you can set it to, to close for your services and things like that. So you can also pause services as well. If perhaps uh, you're too busy with takeaway, then you might wanna pause services for a little bit. You can also do the pause services from the app, which I'll show you guys how to actually do that. So let's just click on next for now. And then over here for schedule orders, this basically means that you can allow people to order for later. So for example, if you are closed, um, you can still uh, actually allow your customers to order food. And then once you're open, then the push notification will be delivered to your tablet or your phone to allow you to accept or reject the order within 15 minutes. So over here, uh, we're gonna select yes, and you can play around with the different settings over here, okay? So once you've done that, then click on next. So generally here for the sales tax, in Australia at least, we have the taxes included in the menu prices already. So I'm gonna select that one. And then the sales tax, I'm gonna call it uh, GST. And then over here, taxation for deliveries, just keep it at zero. Currency, it's gonna be Australian dollars. You can set this to your specific area. So we can click on next. So for the payment method with cash on delivery and pickup, so this is gonna be commission free as well as you don't have to pay any fee to Gloria Food at all if you're accepting cash only. And you can also accept card at your premises and you know, you're not gonna get charged for that at all. So I'll walk you through how to set up the payments, um, how to actually install the credit card payment thing a little bit later on. So you can select this for now and then we'll come back and set up the payment methods for Stripe and PayPal and things like that later. So click on next. And over here, uh, we'll just need to enter in the official restaurant details. So I'm just gonna put in the dummy information for right now. Okay, and then click on next. So over here, I'm gonna uh, generate my terms and conditions by clicking on create template. So click on create. Okay, so you may want to read through the terms and conditions and edit it to your specific needs. So right now I'm just gonna keep it as that and then click on next. And the same thing for the privacy policy, create from template, create. And again, you may wanna read over that and edit it uh, to your needs. So over here, click on next. Okay, so the next step is the app installation. So what this basically means is it's basically gonna connect your Gloria Food account to an app that you actually install on your phone or your tablet. So you could have, uh, you can install it on the Apple iOS or Android uh, devices as well. So we can click on next. Basically, um, you can select, you know, are you using a smartphone or a tablet? So essentially for our restaurant, we use a tablet, like a dedicated tablet at the restaurant because you need to actually, you know, keep it open and active rather than using like your own personal smartphone. That's not as good. I mean, you can use it um, temporarily, but it's probably better to just purchase like a cheap tablet that you can actually just use for your restaurant. But right now I'm gonna set it up at home. So I'm gonna use my own smartphone. So we're gonna click on next. So basically you can get the link sent via SMS to your phone and then you can install it on your phone by clicking on the link. So basically what I'm gonna do is just set in my phone number, okay, and then click on next. And then that's gonna send the SMS instructions to my mobile phone. And then you just need to click the link and then that link is gonna redirect you to download the app. So once you've downloaded, you can click on open. So over here, we need to click on login 
and all you need to do is put in your uh, email address that you created with Glora Food earlier. Sometimes it may already pre-populate with your email and password and all you need to do is click on login. So I'm just gonna quickly uh, type that in and log into my Glora Food account. Okay, so once you've logged in, then what we could do is create a test order to basically show you guys the basic process of it. So over here on the top right, on the three dots, you can click on that and you can create test order. Okay, and that's the test order coming through. So over here, you can review the details, uh, what your customer has ordered. If you can't fulfill that for any reason, for example, you may not have that specific item in stock, you can click on the cross on the left um, if you can, then click on accept, and then you can set the delivery time, for example, 20 minutes, click on accept. And then what that is gonna do, it's gonna accept the order, and then in real time, it's gonna notify your customer and to tell them that you are preparing the order and they can come pick it up in 20 minutes or however long that you actually set. So if you've actually connected your printer, then on the bottom right-hand side, you can click on the print, okay? And essentially, we haven't set it up yet, but it'll print out the order, and then you can take that to your kitchen for preparation. Okay, so basically we can click on back over here, click on the settings gear icon, click on order print orders, and you can add the printer. So I'll sort of show you that a little bit later on, um, but we're gonna come back over here, okay? And I'll also show you guys how to um, set the availability of your menu items later, because we actually haven't added any menu items right now. So we're gonna go back to our tutorial. So over here, we're just gonna click on next and I'm gonna show you guys how to set up the menu, okay? So the alert call is useful. Um, if you wanna put in your phone number over here, this basically lets you know if you haven't turned on your Gloria Food on your phone yet, uh, like when you're open, all right? So click on next, actually click on menu setup Okay, so just click on menu setup and I'll show you guys how to set your menu in as well as um, how to use the menu builder. Okay, so I'm not quite sure um, the language is not set in English at the moment. So we're gonna hover and click over here in language. And let's just make sure that we set this to English over here. And hopefully that is just like automatically saved. Okay, so let's go back over here to the settings gear icon and then click on menu setup and receive orders and then click on menu setup. Okay, so that's better. So it's in English now. So over here we can click on next and next, next, next and show me how. Um, basically, I'm going to show you guys how to do it. So we're going to click on next over here. Okay, so right now they have pre-populated a few menu items. Um, so what I'm gonna do is show you guys how to set it up from scratch. So what we're gonna do is just uh, look for the delete button and remove it. Okay, let's just remove this section as well. Yes. And remove here, yes. And let's just remove that last one as well, yes. So what you can do is click on add category and this is gonna pop up. So for example, we could do something like entree and you can put in a category description. Let's click on save. And then over here, we can start adding in our food items. So for example, let's just say, for example, we do something like spring rolls, oops, spring rolls. And then you can set a price here. So let's just say $6. And here at description, you might put a description about about uh, what is in the spring rolls, or you also can put the quantity of the spring rolls. So like maybe, you know, vegetarian spring rolls, and then you could do maybe something like six pieces, and then you can click on save, right? So it's very, very simple to add in an item. Now, if you do need help, you can also click on show me, and they do have some videos to show you guys how to actually do it. So over here, we can click on add, and we can add a picture. So we can click on browse and I'm gonna upload the image that I have of the spring roll. So over here and then click on open. 
set that image in and then you have the spring rolls. So over here, you have a few drop down options. So you can edit the uh, menu by clicking on edit. The really um, cool thing is that you can actually click on show and hide. So basically if it's out of stock, you can um, select out of stock over here. You can also select uh, to hide it from the menu. So for example, I know that um, during Chinese New Year, we might have some items which are only for that specific period. And then what I'll do is I'll just hide that from the menu and then enable it next year and then basically edit the price or edit the description later. So you can hide it from your menu. You can also hide until. So for example, you may not have, you know, letters for that day and then you can click on hide until. So you can set the time of when it will be available again. Okay. And you can also click on show only from. So basically what this is, it is if you want to do maybe something like a lunch menu and then you can have that lunch menu show only at a specific time. So what I do recommend is, you know, if you want to show only from, then you could do it from the actual category itself. So perhaps, you know, instead of on trade, this could be like, you know, like lunch specials. Okay. And then what you do is over here, show and hide, you can do show only from, and you can set the days and you can set the time, right? So it's only going to be visible from 11 to 3 PM during the days that you actually set in. Okay. So that is that. So the next thing I want to show you guys is if we click into over here, the item. So for example, for spring rolls, maybe you have multiple uh, sizes. So you can click on multiple sizes and here we can do like maybe instead of small size, we might just do like pieces, like six pieces, $6 add size. And then we do something like, you know, 10 pieces. And maybe this is like $9.50. And then over here, you can also click on it to basically pre-select that item and we can click on save. Okay. So to show you what that basically looks like is basically going to hide this one first, click on preview and test ordering. And then you can actually see that, um, item. Okay. So I don't think it has actually refreshed yet. So let's just go back over here. Okay. So I got to make sure we close that as well. And let's click on preview test ordering. Okay. So we've got the spring rolls here and then we can click into it and then people can select the size. So for six pieces, it's $6 and then for 10 pieces, it's $9.50 and then they can add it to the cart. All right. So over here, you also have special instructions. So with these special instructions that allows people to leave like a note there. So sometimes, for example, let's just say, you know, you might have like a curry beef or something like that, right? And the curry beef is, let's say $15. Now for that curry, sometimes because it's already pre-made, then you may not be able to really customize it because sometimes I know that sometimes people ask for, they want a curry and then they want it to be less spicy. But the thing is that the spices have already been um, pre-cooked. So you can't really allow people to, to edit that, right? So just in case you do want to do that, um, then you could do something like, uh, the options. And then over here, you can hide the special instruction input field, right? So that won't allow people to add a note to that specific item. Okay. So you can also select, you know, if it's hot and spicy or is it vegetarian, gluten-free, you can put that there. Okay. So once we put that in and then preview test ordering. So it should actually show that little icon there. Okay. With the spicy icon. So over here, I'm going to show you guys, uh, let's say for example, we add another item. Let's say for example, you know, this is like a pizza category, click on save and we could do maybe something like a Hawaiian pizza. Okay. Hopefully that's how you spell it. Hawaiian pizza. Let's just say $12. And we could do multiple sizes over here as well. So like small, $12, add medium, um, 16, and then we could do large. This one could be like 20 and then click on save. So over here on the right hand side, you have choices and add-ons. So basically with a pizza, sometimes you'll be able to allow people to add in toppings. 
So as you can see, there is no choices and add-ons for toppings. So what you can do is you can add the group. So for example, you know, toppings, and then we can click on save. And then over here, we can add choice of toppings, right? So for example, uh, you could add extra cheese and that's an extra dollar. Click on save. You could add more toppings, you know, like more pineapple or something like that. Uh, extra dollar. Uh, maybe add prawns, extra dollar, and let's just do one more. So maybe capsicum, okay, one dollar, and click on save. So what you could do like this, you can just click on it, and then you can drag it to that pizza, okay? So I'm just gonna link it to, hold on, link to all sizes. So then once people order, then they'll be able to select the toppings. So click on Hawaiian pizza, and then over here, they can select the size, so like medium size, and then they can choose the extra toppings that they want, just like that. So let's just say, for example, you want to add like another pizza, then what you could do is you could just duplicate it. And then you can just like change the title and you can change it like that, right? So another way of doing it is if you have a lot of pizzas added over here, um, you don't have to link the toppings to the actual pizza. You can actually link the toppings, like you can click on the toppings and link it to the whole entire category. So that is basically gonna be linked to these pizzas over here and it's not gonna affect the ones on the top. Um, we could add another sort of uh, addition. So it could be like type of crust and then click on save, add the choice. So this could be maybe thin crust. So the price is gonna be zero and we could do like a you know cheese crust or something like that and then we could do maybe a thick crust so over here we might want to set it so that it is a mandatory one so edits okay so people have to select the type of crust click on save and then over here we're going to link it to the entire category so if we click on preview and test ordering and if we click on the Hawaiian pizza, then people will need to choose the crust, right? So they can um, choose the size uh, for the toppings they don't need to because it's not required. And then they can choose the type of crust and then add to cart, okay? Just like that. So over here, you can also, I think you can also rearrange it, rearrange the order, okay? So you might want the type of crust first before the toppings. So that is, I think, a little bit better. So once you've done that, then we could add like, for example, another category and maybe this one could be like noodles, save it. So over here, I'm going to do pad Thai and let's just do $12 and then we can click on save. So for example, for the pad Thai, you may have like a vegetarian version. You might have like a prawn or a seafood version, or you might have a chicken version. So you can click on add group. And then this one could be like, choose meat. Um, and then we can click on mandatory. So they must choose one, click on save. And over here, we might have a vegetarian. Okay, so this one is gonna be the base price. So it's just gonna be empty. Uh, click on save. So add choice of meat. This one could be prawn. Okay, so you add maybe $3 for it. And then you could add like maybe another one, which is like seafood. So it's like a mix of maybe prawn, calamari, and other seafood. And then you might have one is maybe chicken, right? And this one's $2, save, right? So you could do it like that, and then you can drag it, and then link it to the pad thai like that. And then we can add in an image, choose a image. So this one here, click on open. And then we're going to set that image in and then we're gonna preview it. So always preview it to see how it actually looks for your customers. So let's have a look, Pad Thai. Okay, so the base one is the vegetarian one, which is $12. If you want the prawn one, it's gonna be an extra $3 and that's gonna show up, all right? So what I'm gonna do, um, I'm also gonna click on the theme picture over here, right? Because you wanna set your own specific theme picture for your restaurant rather than using the default. So you wanna click on change the theme picture. I have my own. And then this is gonna be the web ordering one. So 
Right now it is like a burger. So you might want to uh, get your own images. So we can click on change, browse. So this one, I'm gonna go over here and try and see if we can find a nice image. So let's just say maybe some Japanese food. Uh, let's see, maybe something like this, okay. All right, so just set that in. Okay, so you wanna go ahead and set it in for the desktop version, the mobile version, and the restaurant teaser one, the order accepted screen. So basically, this is gonna be once the order has been accepted, like for example, the notification uh, has gone through the restaurant, they've accepted it, this is what your customers will see. So you could do something like, for example, change it. So browse, library. So this one could be like the prepping the orders one, okay. So then let's choose this one over here. Okay, so you can showcase that you are actually preparing their orders like with an image like that. And you wanna make sure you set it in for mobile as well. So change it, browse library, and set that one in like that. All right, so you can go ahead and set that in for yourself. So I'm gonna make sure that uh, I finish off the menu uh, for the demo website. So you can go ahead and pause the video and add in your menu items. So I'm just gonna click on next for now. And as you can see, that's the um, preview of it. So that looks quite good. And then we can click on apply. So over here, we can click on publishing. Okay, so you can click on Facebook. And what you could do is that you can actually link your Gloria Food to your Facebook where people can order directly from your Facebook page, right? So you can click on next and you can follow the prompts to learn how to actually do it on Facebook. Click on next over here and you can follow those prompts to learn how to do that. We're gonna click on next. And over here, um, they're asking you if you wanna create a sales optimized website. So you don't need that because we are creating that ourselves. Okay, so I'm gonna click on no and then click on next. And then for the legacy website, so this is going to be publishing the button on our website that we're creating right now. So we want to do that. We wanna click on yes and then click on next. So go back and add your address right now. Okay, so Let's have a look. Uh, we need to put in our address, so. Okay, so for some reason that wasn't uh, saved or something like that. I just need to put in this again. Next, table reservation, yes. Dine in, no, next. The opening hours, okay. Uh, yes, next. Okay, so I think that should be okay. Let's click back on legacy website and let's select yes. And okay, tax settings. All right, so let's click on next. Next again. Next. Okay, so I think it just wasn't saving before, so I just need to save everything again. Okay, so that is all good. Okay, let's try again. Hopefully that's gonna work. Next. Okay, so over here, if someone else is creating a website for you, they'll basically, you can put in their email address and it's gonna send them the HTML code to put that onto your website. But basically we're gonna do it ourselves. So we're just clicking on, I'll do ourselves. Okay, so we don't need that at the moment. So what we're gonna do is go back to your uh, website. Let's go back to and visit site. And I'll show you guys how to easily add the button to our website. So because we have the Gloria Food plugin installed, then we can click on edits with Elementor. And then what's really awesome is that Gloria Food restaurant will show their specific widgets here, which you can easily just drag in. So here we have a button already, and I'm just gonna delete that one because we don't need it. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to add in, add in your button. So the first button we're gonna add in is the ordering button. So we can drag it and put it below that. Okay, just drop it in. I'm gonna close uh, this window here. All right, so see menu and order. So that is looking very, very nice. So here you can actually change the text. So you could just do like, you know, order now, 
or you know leave it as is. So I might just keep it as C menu and order, that's fine. So the thing that I do wanna change is the style. All right, so because the background is like a red, I wanna make it so perhaps this one is like a white button. So what we're gonna do is for the text color, let's change it to white. And then for the border type, okay, so we're gonna select it to be solid. And then for the border, I'm going to change it to white. So over here, I'm gonna set the width to two, okay? And then for the color, I'm gonna set it to white. All right, so border type solid and the width two pixels for top, right, bottom, and left. And then for the color, we're gonna select white. Okay, so as you can see, when you hover over that, it's gonna go black. All right, so you may wanna edit the hover color. So over here on the top over here, instead of normal, click on hover. All right, so this is gonna change the color specifically when you hover over the button. So for the text color, uh, what we wanna do is perhaps change it to black. Okay, so change it to maybe something like that. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is for the hover background color, let's change it to white. Okay, so that is looking really, really awesome. So then I think that is pretty good for now. So let's click on update. So before we do anything, I'm just gonna go back over here and I'm gonna click on view page. And then I'm gonna click on that just to see if that uh, is actually working fine. Okay, there you go. So that is really awesome. So for example, customer is gonna click on that and they can add it to cart. So I'll show you guys the uh, entire process a little bit later in the video. So what we wanna do is add in another button, which is the table reservation button. So let's go back, edit with Elementor. And then over here, we've got the reservation button or element. So we can just drop it and just drag it below that. So don't worry about the alignment. I'll show you how to align it properly. So what we could do is I think we can actually just copy the style and paste the style. So I'm gonna try that, so right click, copy it, and then right click this button over here, right? And then paste the style, right? So it's gonna take the styling from what we did over here and paste it into this style over here. So you may want to do that, or you may wanna change it to a different color because otherwise it's like too similar. So I'm just gonna leave this for now. So what I wanna do is I wanna align these two buttons right next to each other. So to do that, I wanna click on the first button on top, okay, this one, and then go to, I believe it was advanced. And then for the width, instead of default, set it to inline auto. And then for the next button, so click into that one, click into advanced, width, and then that one, set it to inline auto. Okay, so that's gonna be next to each other. So the problem right now is that it's just too close to each other. So what we're gonna do is we can click on the first button and we could do like a little padding on the right hand side. So we could do something like, okay, deselect that one. Okay, so let's just do maybe 20 or something like that. Or yeah, 20. And I think that is not too bad. Okay, so you may wanna 25 or something like that. It really depends on you. So you can also change the color of this button over here. I'll do that later. Um, you can do it now if you want to. Um, you can just follow the same steps. So go to click the button and then go to style and then you can edit the button color and things like that over here. All right, so let's click on update and I'm going to click over here on the left and view the page and let's have a look, right? So that is looking really, really nice. I'm gonna click on table reservations and then people can set in the uh, reservation just like that. And then that's gonna be delivered to your app on your phone. All right, so we can click on close. So the other thing we always wanna make sure is that it is also mobile responsive. So let's click on edit with Elementor again. Okay, so you always have to check, you know, whenever you finish your layout, it is actually mobile responsive as well. So we could click on the responsive mode and then click on mobile. Okay, so that's stacked on top of each other, but obviously there is no spacing, so we may need to fix it. Tablet, tablet's looking okay, but for mobile, it just doesn't look very nice, right? So what we could do is we could click on this one, maybe this one, table reservations, 
advanced and just add a little padding on the top so maybe like 20 pixels oops let's um delete that and unselect that one 20 pixels on the top okay so that's looking really nice and update so let's head back over here and let's just view that page so what i want to show you guys now is some really important things and i think it's also going to be helpful for your website and your business as well so one of the things is I'm going to show you guys how to add a call now button. So basically what that means is you'll have a button on your homepage when people are on their mobile device, people can click on it and then it's going to um, take people to their call page with your number there. So people can just click on call and then they can call your restaurant. So over here, we can just drag in a button module. So just drag it in and you can drag it in below table reservations. Okay. So we're gonna put it next to it over here. The first thing that we need to do is we can change the text to something like call now, okay? And you can also add in an icon as well. So you can type in phone and select this one, insert. And then for the link, so what we wanna do is type in T-E-L, so telephone, like short for telephone, and then colon, and then you can enter in your restaurant's phone number, like that, for example. And then basically when people click on it, it's going to take them to the call screen with this number um, inputted already. So over here, what we could do is click on update. Now the next thing I want to do is move this to the right hand side. So what we could do is we could right click and perhaps we could copy and then go back over here and paste style. So the only thing we need to do is probably add just a little bit of spacing on the left hand side or something. So let's just add maybe on table reservations, advanced and padding on the right hand side, 25. Oops, we need to deselect the values. So deselect that one. We could do that like that, something like that. Okay, so for desktop, you don't really need uh, the call now button. So what we could actually do is we can click into it and then go to advanced, scroll down to the responsive and click on it. And we can hide it on desktop and tablet devices. Okay, so basically this is only gonna show up on mobile devices. So let's click on responsive mode and I'm gonna select the mobile and then you have the call now button like that. All right, so that is that. Let's click on update and let's go back over here to desktop Okay, so something else which I think is really important as well is that, you know, when people come to your website, sometimes they want to view all your menu or they want to download the PDF and perhaps print off a takeaway menu and stick it on their fridge. So what you could actually do is we can click on this link over here, okay? And what we can actually do is paste in the link for our PDF over here. And that's going to allow people to download that PDF. So what we're gonna do is you can actually upload your PDF to your media library. So we can go back, okay, click on the three icons on the top and we can click on exit to dashboard. Okay, let's just close that. Okay, so from back here, um, you won't see like the normal dashboard. So click on WordPress, this icon on the top left. Okay, it's gonna take you back over here. So you can click on media and then what you can do is upload your PDF menu file. So you can generate it on somewhere like canva.com. You can actually create a menu and you can download as a PDF or you can you know, create your menu on Adobe or you might have your own designer. Make sure to get them to send you the PDF file. And then what you could do is you can go over here and add new, select files and upload that PDF file, all right? So this is the one that I uploaded earlier, click on it, and then we can copy URL to clipboard. Okay, so copy that URL to clipboard, close it over here, come back and visit site. And then we're gonna turn on edit with Elementor and we can add that link there. So when people click on it, it's going to enable people to download it on their computer. So let's go down over here and this is the link. So click on that one and paste that in, link options, I might open it in a new window, okay? So let's click on update, and then let's preview changes, let's have a look, 
Okay, so let's click on that one. And then that's going to open in a new tab. And then you have your menu over there. So people can download it onto the computer or they can view it over here. Okay, so we can go back over here. And then what we could do is we can, let's just view that page. So right now on the top right, you have a reservation. Okay, so to edit this button, like for example, if you want them to download your menu, or if you actually want to have the order button or table reservations on the top, you might actually need to create a custom header, which I will create a separate video for, but to actually just change the link, uh, we can go to customize. And then over here, we can find the, I think it was header builder. And then here you can sort of rearrange it, right? So this is the button over here. You, you can remove it if you want to, or you can move it, right? So you can move it and change it to be over here. So let's just move it back like this, right? And over here, you can, you know, add different elements and build out your header, but I'm not gonna go too much in depth in this video. Let's just click on button, okay? And if you wanna link it to your menu, you can just put it in like that and open it in a new tab, okay? So menu, like that. And that's gonna to link to that menu as well. You can also click on the design and edit the design over here. Okay, so we're gonna click on publish and we're gonna close that. So if you do want to add in your buttons over here, then we will need to actually add in a custom header design. So that's gonna take a little bit more work, um, which I might create a separate video for because it's gonna take like another 20 minutes and I didn't wanna put it into this video, it's gonna make it too long. So we're gonna leave it as that for now and we're gonna come back down over here and you may want to edit the content on the footer section. So to do that, you can hover over here and then you can click on footer. Okay, so click on that. And then over here, you can edit the your address or any text that you need, right? So for example, the logo um, doesn't really fit well. We're just gonna change the image size because it doesn't fit too well. So let's just put the full image size like that. Okay, instead of the thumbnail size because it sort of has cropped it, all right? So you can change the text over here and you can also click into the social media link and then click into it and then update it with your Facebook profile URL, paste it into there. Same thing with like Twitter, you can delete it if you want to. So for example, perhaps you don't have a Twitter account or you don't have a YouTube account, you just have maybe just Instagram and Facebook, then you can just delete it and just make sure to put in your link over here and then you can click on link options and open it in a new window, okay? And then click on update. So over here, it's fairly straightforward. You can just click into it to just edit the times that you open. Same thing with the reservation thing. So what you can actually do is, because this section is a custom section, um, you do have access to the uh, elemental elements. So we can click into that, right? So Perhaps we can just delete this one, okay? And we can come back up here, put in the reservations button, just like that. And, okay, so we can't really see that. So we may want to change the style. So let's go to style for the text color. Let's change it to white and then the border to solid, add a border, so two pixels. And then for the border color, change it to white, and then you have your table reservations on the bottom like that, right? And click on update. So once that is done, we can click over here and we can click on view page. And then if you wanna go back to your homepage, you can click on the demo logo. And let's scroll down over here. All right, so you may need to or want to change the things over here, powered by a food demo or something like that. Let's see if we can edit that with the footer settings. If not, we can try and change that. Okay, so I might want to actually edit this section as well. So let's just do copyright. Um, perhaps let's just change our name. Okay, so this is just taking it from the site title. So perhaps we can just change the site title and this one powered by, don't really need that one. Let's just delete that one. 
let's go back over here and let's click on site this update it first oops and then click on site settings and I want to change the site identity site name let's just change it to your restaurant name so restaurant name and then this could be like for your site description it could be like you know authentic Japanese cuisine in Melbourne, something like that. Um, and then over here, you've also got the fab icon. So the fab icon is the little icon on the browser. So for example, for Glora Food, it's like a little leaf. You can click into that. And I don't think, okay, so there, there's a fab icon over here, right? So you can actually create a fab icon on canva.com as well, or you can get the person who's designed your logo to create one for you. So let's say for example, this one over here, it's a PNG file, insert media, and then we can update that and then go back to the editor. Let's also go back and let's just view the page. Okay, so that should be changed. And then you have your fab icon on your tabs like that. So let's go back to our home page. So you can do that just by deleting this on the top and go to your website.com like that. And then scroll down and everything is looking great. Okay. So the other thing I want to show you guys is your, uh, how to add and delete your pages. Okay. So over here, as you can see, you have your about page. Um, to edit your about page, it's pretty much the same thing. Turn on the elemental and build, uh, and edit um, or delete things that you don't want. So over here, your menu, right? So you may want to delete these pages. So let's click into that one. Right, so you have your menu over here already, but then you have the dark menu as well, and you may not want that one. Okay, so how do you delete it? So we can go over here and go to dashboard. And then you want to go to your pages, right? And we can delete the menu dark, right? So we can just delete that one, trash it. And then that should be deleted, right? So if you want to add a new page, so let's say for example, um, you want a page just like for your videos or something, just click on add new. Um, or we could just do something like catering. Okay. And you want to put some information about your catering services. So we can click on publish and publish that. Okay. And then we're going to click with edit with Elementor. And then you have your new page. So we can click on the starter template icon. And let's just say, you know, we'll look for food or, okay. So these all are premium ones. Uh, let's see if we can get some free ones in here. So let's just say, for example, this one over here, right? I know it doesn't um, have anything to do with food, but this is just an example. You can actually really easily change the images as well. So let's just click on this one and let's see if we can import this template. Okay, so services, let's just change it to like catering image, click on it, choose image and choose this image over here. Okay, over there, change the text, um, services. So over here, just click into it and you can change it, change the icons, change the color and delete everything that you don't need. Okay, and then you'll be good to go, right? So once we click on update that, then let's just click on over here and view that page. So as you can see, we created this page, but it's not in our menu section over here. So what we could do is we can go back over here, hover over restaurants name. Uh, we can go to dashboard or we can go directly to menus and click on that. Uh, let's just go back to dashboard and I'll show you where you can also access that. So let's go to the appearance uh, menus. And then over here, we can set in our menu, right? So this one is the page that we deleted. So I'm going to just remove that one. The Elementor uh, menu. 
So basically, let's have a look. Um, I'm going to delete this one over here, remove that, just delete that and just have it as menu. And then I have another page, which is the catering page over here on the left hand side, click on add to menu. All right, and then you'll have your catering there. So if you want to rearrange your menu, so you can click on it and just rearrange it like that and drop it, right? If you want to um, create like a drop down menu, then what we need to do is, for example, if you want catering to drop down from menu, then you just click on it and sort of indent it below the menu like that. And so when you hover over menu, then it's going to drop down with catering. Okay. So let's just save that as an example for now. Okay. So you can come back here and edit it. Uh, let's go and visit site. And then over there, it's going to drop down catering like that. All right. So you can obviously have it um, right next to each other and not have it drop down. You just need to go back and edit that. Okay. So let's just go to our contact page and I want to make sure that this contact form is working properly. All right. So this is really important because sometimes um, if you don't set it up correctly, then you're not going to actually get the message that your customers send to you. So we're going to go through exactly how to do it as well as create a professional email in Hostinger so that people can email you at like hello at your restaurant.com. Okay. So it's a lot more professional and we also want to make sure that these messages are delivered. Okay. So the problem with our contact form right now is let's say for example, someone wants to send you a message. Uh, for example, Jeff, he wants to make a booking and he sends you a message. Can I make a booking for the 18th of August? And then he clicks on send a message. So while that message has been sent, uh, thank you for contacting us. If we actually go and check our email, then that email might be delivered to our spam folder. And sometimes it may not be delivered at all. Basically what we need to do is to fix that. So we basically need to set up the SMTP or the simple mail transfer protocol, which authenticates our email and our domain name so that the emails will actually be sent into our inbox because it's really important if you know, all your emails are delivered into your spam folder, you might actually miss something and you're going to miss, um, you know, potential bookings and lose money. So it's really important to fix it and it only takes a few minutes. So let's go back over here to hosting as uh, H panel area or your control panel area. And you'll need to make sure you log in and then we need to go and click on emails on the top. So over here, we can click on that. This is like a professional email that you can have for your domain name. You can use this for your suppliers. You can use this for your customers as well. We can click on email accounts and then create a new email account for the email. We could do something like hello, or we could do something like your name. So let's just do hello at your domain.com and then set in a password and then set in a password recovery email address. So this might be your personal email address. Scroll down and click on create a new account. So once you've created a new account, you can actually manage your emails in the Titan email inbox. You'll need to log in with your email as well as your password. And you can go over there and you can use this inbox over here. Um, it just needs to load, but uh, you can put in your password and log in. And then you can send and receive emails over here. So what I do recommend is bookmarking it, but I'll show you guys quickly how to actually connect it with your Gmail account. So you can actually send emails, manage your emails and everything from your Gmail inbox. That just makes it a lot easier. Let's go back over here and we can click on done. Let's click back onto the email tab on the top. Click on this again. Now, instead of clicking create a new email account, we're going to find out the SMTP details for our hosting. So let's click over here configure desktop app and then scroll down to configure via pop. So what we're going to do is we need to go back over to our website and we need to go to dashboard and we need to install a new plugin. So plugins are essentially like apps, but for your website. So for example, on your phone, you've got like dating apps, uh, you've got productivity apps and things like that. Plugins are the same thing, but for your website. So just click on that and click on add new and we're going to install a plugin. So on the right hand side, SMTP, click on enter to search 
and we're going to install this one over here. So WP mail by WP forms and click on install and then click on activate. So once that is activated, it's going to redirect you here and we're going to click on let's get started. And then for the choose SMTP mailer, we can scroll down to other SMTP, save and continue. And here for the configure mail settings, for the SMTP host, we're going to use the one that we have over here. So this one, the outgoing server. So just copy that. So this might be different if you're using something like SiteGround or another hosting provider. You'll need to find out where you can get the SMTP details um, and you can contact their live chat support for that as well. So let's go back over here, paste that in. For the encryption, so this is going to be the SSL encryption and SMTP port automatically will be set to 465. We can scroll down to the SMTP username. So this is going to be the email address that you just created on Hostinger. So this is going to be hello at fooddemo.com, right? So this is your email address and set in the password that you set in before. So for the from name, this is basically like in the inbox, it's going to be like the, the name. So we could do something like Hogan at uh, our restaurant. Okay, so restaurant name like that. And then here you can also force the name. So if you're using other plugins, then you can actually set it so that, you know, all emails will be sent from this name over here, right? So you can set that in. Normally I do set that in, but it's up to you. For the from email address, I'm going to set it to my email address here instead of my Gmail one. So paste that in and then over here, save and continue. Scroll down and save and continue and then save and continue again. And then we can skip this step and that's basically going to check the mail configuration. Okay. So that has been set up. All right. So we can finish the setup on down there. Okay. So once that is set up, then our emails should be sent properly into our inboxes. So we can go back and visit site and do a quick test on our contact form. Click on that, scroll down. And let's say for example, Hogan, let's put in a dummy email for now. I hope this works. Click on send a message. Okay, so let's click on our inbox and here is our message. So Hogan at restaurant and then our message is delivered into our inbox, which is really, really important. So the next thing I want to show you guys is how to actually receive your emails into your Gmail inbox as well as send emails from this domain email. Okay, so you can manage everything in your Gmail account rather than using the Titan email. Let's go back over here to our Gmail accounts and we can click on the settings gear icon on the top, click on see all settings and then click on accounts and import. And then if here, scroll down to check mail from other accounts, click on add mail accounts. And this thing should pop up on the top like that. So drag that in and we're going to check the email from hello at food ordering. Oops demo.com, right? So this is your email address. Click on next. And then we're going to click on next. And then here for the username, it's going to be the same as your email address. So just copy that and paste that in, put in your password like that. And for the pop server, we can go back over here and then we can find the pop server over here for the incoming server. This is the pop server on the top. Copy that. And let's just minimize the window for now because it's underneath. So let's just paste that in. And for the port, I think it's 995. Yep. Okay. So we can go back over here, select this, always use secure connection, label incoming messages, and then we can click on add accounts. So basically what this is going to do, it's going to log into this email address and to check our email and then basically make a copy of it. And then so that you can view it in your Gmail inbox, right? So the next thing is, yes, I want to be able to send mail as this is going to allow you to send email 
from this account in your Gmail account. So I'll show you in a second how that works. Just click on next. And then here you can set in your name. So click on next. And then for the SMTP server, it is the same server that we set in before SMTP over here, copy that and just paste that into here. And the port is going to be the 465. And then you can put in your email address. So hello at food ordering demo.com password, set in the password that you set in before and then set the SSL. Okay. And then add accounts. So once that is done, it just needs to confirm that you basically own this domain email. So you can go back over here and you can check your inbox. Close that and you should receive an email from the Gmail team and you can click into that and you can click the link, right? And confirm that. So that basically just confirms that you actually own this domain email. So that's, we can basically send emails from our Gmail account now. So if we go back to our Gmail and we click on inbox, we should also receive that email in our inbox in one to two minutes because it does take one to two minutes for it to actually check the email from your inbox over here. Okay. So just wait a little bit. Okay. So as you can see that will pop up as well. So you can also confirm it over here with this link. Now let's go back over here to our inbox. If we click on the contact message, we can scroll down. Okay. So we can click on reply. So we're basically replying to Jeff and for the from email, we can set it to the hello at food ordering demo, right? So that is really cool. So that basically when you reply to Jeff, he'll see your email from this domain email over here. Okay. So the other thing I want to show you really quickly is how to configure your contact form. So let's say for example, we want to go back to our dashboard. So here we can go to WP forms. So where is it over here? Click on all forms and then we can click on edit. Okay. So you may want to change your contact form a little bit, uh, maybe by adding like a drop down. Uh, let's say for example, something like that. And you can set in different, uh, drop down items if you need to. Um, you can also go to the settings over here. And then over here, you can also change like the submit button message and things like that as well. We can also go to the notifications. So you may want to change the send to email address other than your admin email, which is the admin email that you, you log into WordPress with. You may want to change it to your uh, new domain email. That's up to you. So like food ordering demo.com. Okay. And you can also edit the thing over here as well. So we can click on confirmation. You can also change the confirmation message and then you can click on preview to see what that form looks like. Okay. And then we can click on save and close. So if you want to embed this contact form somewhere else, you can take the short code like this, copy, go back to visit site and you can paste it anywhere on your website and it should appear. But with Elementor, I think they do have a little module which you can just drag and drop in. So let's say, for example, you want the contact form on your homepage, like down here. So we can create a new section like this. And then we could go over here, click on this icon on the top right. Let's search for contact and WP form, drag it and drop it, select your form. Right. And then you can have your form over here. So over here, you could perhaps you could add a map and just drop it in there like that. Okay. So you can add it anywhere on your website and you'll be good to go. So I want to show you the next part now, show you guys how to configure the online payments and printing as well as managing your orders on Gloria food. So what I want to show you now is how to set up your online payments so you can accept credit cards or PayPal directly on your food ordering website so people can pay online and they can just come and pick up the order and go. So first of all, you need to log into your Glorifood account. So glorifood.com and put in the username as well as the password that you set in earlier and then navigate to the gear icon tab. So the setup tab, scroll down to payments and click on online payment. So over here, we're going to accept 
online credit card payments, select yes, and then click on next. So what we need to do is we can select Stripe over here. So for your provider, select Stripe. So there are also a few other uh, payment providers over here. So perhaps if it's something that you use in your country, WinCave, or if it's uh, Braintree, Authorize.net, you can set it up via these ones as well. And you'll need to connect the API key. So over here with PayPal, you can select PayPal, right? Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that right now, but it's fairly similar to the process that we're going to set up with Stripe. It is basically creating an account on PayPal and you'll need to link up the API key, which I'm going to show you with Stripe. So we're going to click on no provider for now and click on next. So over here, it's going to charge you $29 per month and we're going to click on subscribe. So I'm just going to pause the video for a second while I fill in the details. So click on next and then just enter in your own credit card details. Once that is done, click on next. Okay, so we're gonna click on let's do it. So what we need to do is we need to sign up for Stripe. So once you've signed up for Stripe, we need to publish the publishable key over here as well as paste in the live secret key. So to sign up for Stripe, you can go to stripe.com so it's probably going to redirect you to your country. So right now it's re redirected me to the Australian site. So we need to start now and you'll need to sign up for an account. So you need to provide like your business details as well as your bank account. So basically once you get paid in Stripe, it's going to send the funds to your local bank account on a daily basis or a weekly basis. It really depends on what you set in. So over here, I've created my Stripe account earlier. And we're gonna click on the top right over here, developers. And then on the left-hand side, we're gonna click on API keys. And then over here, we need to get the publishable key. So just click to copy. And then come back over to our Gloria Food website. Just paste that in over here. And then for the live secret key, we need to publish that as well. So let's go back over here and get the secret key over here. And then let's say for example, let's create a new one. So Gloria food, click on create, copy that over. Okay, done. And then let's go back over here, paste that in and then scroll down here. We need to choose the currency. So once that is done, we're going to click on connect and then hopefully that is connected. So right now I think that is all good. So what we're going to do is click on next. So over here, um, if you do want to enable other card payments, then you can set it up as well. Same with PayPal. It's basically going to be the same process. You'll need to create a PayPal business account with your bank details as well as your business details. And then you can follow the prompts over here to paste in the client ID and the secret key. So I'm going to show you guys one more setting. So you can go back over here to the three dots on the bottom. And we can also go to the advanced settings. So over here, we can also click on service fees and click on add fee. So if you do want to charge the card processing fee to your customers, you can set in the card processing fee here, card processing fee, and then set in the percentage that you want to charge and apply it to the card orders. So let's see. So orders of selected type, uh, this one over here, online payments like that, and then click on save. Right, so that's going to charge to your customers and your customers will pay that fee. So that's really up to you and dependent on how you want to run your business. Here you can also click on limit schedule orders. So if you do want to, if you're quite busy, you might want to actually set up this. So for example, you don't want too many orders at that specific time. So you can actually limit the quantity over here as well. In regards with the printing, you can also click on the printing and you can also go to the templates. So over here with the templates, this is really cool because you can actually edit the sort of font and the font sizes. So for example, for the kitchen uh, print, so let's click on edit. So this one is going to print in the kitchen. So you can actually go and click on the items and you can actually edit the size of the items as well. So for example, the item is now 12 pixels. We can make it a little bit bigger to like 15. So this could be a lot 
clearer for your chefs and people who are preparing the order and you can up the size like that. Okay, so once you're actually done, you can also delete, perhaps if you don't need this section over here, you can also remove it like that. And then that's pretty much good to go. And there are also some other third-party integrations which you can take a look at, for example, delivery tracking, uh, point of sale integrations as well. And yeah, so there's a ton of different features to actually manage your orders. You can actually click over here to the sort of chart icon and you can click on the list view. Okay, and you can actually see your orders uh, over time in sort of like a, a dashboard area over here. And you can also click on your clients so you can see your clients as well like that. And you can also set up different offers as well. So I think it's this one over here, the rocket one. And you can set up a first buy promo. So for example, if you want to offer a discount for the first purchases, click on yes. And then you can set up maybe like a 10% off or 15% off for the first order. So you can basically, you know, attract your existing customers online to, to get them used to ordering online. So it's going to save you a ton of time, you know, answering the phone so that you can hire less staff and save money on labor cost and things like that as well. So if you need sort of any help, you can actually contact the customer support on Gora Food if it's related to the ordering system, okay? What I'm gonna show you now is how to set up your printers. So how to connect your ordering app on your phone or tablet to the printers at your restaurant or cafe so that when people place an order, then it can be automatically printed. Then I'll go through a real transaction with you guys to show you guys the entire process and how the payment goes through and everything like that. So you know that we're creating a real food ordering website that you can actually use. So to set up the printer, it's very, very simple. All you need to do is click on the gear icon on the bottom right hand side and then click on the auto print orders. So from here, what you need to do is you want to make sure that the um, thermal printer that you have in your restaurant is connected via Wi-Fi. So either that is wireless Wi-Fi or it's connected via the Ethernet cable. And then you need to click on add printer and then click on network cable or Wi-Fi. Or you can click on Bluetooth if you do have a Bluetooth printer, but generally Wi-Fi is better, it's more stable. So we can click into that and we can click on start search. Okay, so over here we have the printer and I'm just gonna select the first one over here and click on add printer. So once that is added, so let's say for example, a, we're gonna do a test order quickly, create a test order. So we can click on that, accept, and we can set the time. And then basically what's gonna happen is that it's gonna automatically print into the printer over here. So we have like two copies, like one receipt as well as one which is for the kitchen, right? So that is pretty much it for the printer. Um, it's very, very easy to set up and install. So let's do a real order. So we can click on see menu or order, or if you wanna do a table reservation, we can click on that as well. And your customers can also reserve a table and that order notification will go through to your tablet, the same as if a takeaway order went through. So let's click on that one. And for example, we wanna add some spring rolls into the cart click on add to cart and then we can click on the cart on the top right. So your customer will enter in their details. They can select their ordering method. So in this case, we're going to do a pickup, click on save. And for the available time, we're going to do as soon as possible for the payment method. We're going to do a card payment. So as you can see here, we've added a card processing fee of 1.75% and that's added to the grand total that your customer will pay. So I'm gonna enter in my card details and make that payment. And then I'm gonna click on use this card. And then I'm gonna click on place pickup order now. So right now the order is coming through on our tablet or your mobile phone. And here we can actually click on the left hand side if you wanna reject it. And you can actually click on reject order and you can select if uh, the reason why you're gonna reject that order. And you can also type in a custom message. Um, in this case, what I'm gonna do is click on accept and set in the time for 20 minutes and accept like that. So right now the order has been confirmed and your customer will see this order confirmation page as well as receive 
a email about that order as well. So that is also gonna print in your premises after you've set up the printer. And let's go ahead and check our Stripe account to see whether or not we have received that payment. Okay, so the payment has gone through. So right now it says it's uncaptured. So basically what happens is the way we've actually set it up is that when you accept the order, it's going to capture the payment within, I think, two hours. The reason for that is because in case you actually reject that order, then the payment won't actually go through. So basically you don't have to um, manually refund the order if you accidentally miss the order or you basically reject that order. So right now we've accepted that order um, and within two hours, it's gonna capture the payment. So as you can see, that has been received over here and then that will be deposited into your Stripe account. And then we can actually set up in the settings area how often you want that to be deposited into your local bank account. So that's basically how the payment process actually works. So in terms of managing your menu on your tablet or phone, you can go to the setting gear icon on the bottom and you can click on the menu items and you can select your categories. So let's say for example, the spring rolls, you've run out of that, you can click into it and you can set the availability over here to be undetermined or if you know that it's gonna be ready by tomorrow, then you can do until tomorrow like that. And then that will be out of stock so your customer won't be able to order. If you're too busy, you can also go back to here on the top right hand side, click on the three dots and you can click on pause services. So you can pause your pickup service or delivery service, table reservations if you're fully booked and things like that. You can really manage everything from this app and it's very, very useful and really simple to use. So that is pretty much it. Now, I'm also gonna talk about how to set up your store if you do have multiple locations. For example, you may have a store in the city and then you might have another one in the shopping center. I'll show you guys how you can add those buttons on your website and how to configure separate menus for that as well. So to enable the multi-store location, on the top over here, you'll need to click on enable multi-location dashboard. So this is basically gonna create a separate dashboard. So for the brand name, so you can just enter your brand name or your restaurant name. And for your restaurant name, you wanna put probably your restaurant plus the location that it's in. So name and location, and then put in that specific restaurant's phone number. So I'm just gonna do a random one for now. I think you also need to put in the country code as well. So let's just do plus. 613 and then for the state you can put that in and put in the address this one is going to be maybe 300 elizabeth street and then click on next so here what you'll need to do is you'll need to put in the specific restaurant owner or the manager for that specific store and also put a different email for that store because you'll be able to log in um, using this email over here as well. So we can click on add location. So once you've added that location, then you'll have a new dashboard area. So this is for the admin, right? And let's say for example, this is the new store you just added in. You'll need to actually click into that and you'll need to configure the settings again. So like for example, you need to set up the service and opening hours, as well as are you gonna offer a pickup or delivery or table reservations. You'll need to set those things again and make sure to save it. And what you'll also need to do is you'll need to set up and connect it with your uh, new tablet. So this tablet will be at your new store, right? And basically you need to set that up uh, for this specific one, okay? and you'll need to log in with the email that you just created beforehand. Um, and you wanna make sure you go to that email uh, address and validate it as well. So make sure you set everything up just like we did earlier in the video. And once you've actually done that, then we can actually go back to here. And what I do recommend is going to the gear icon and clicking on the menu management and setting in a specific menu for that specific location. You can assign the location to that specific menu, 
That way your new uh, sort of manager or person who manages the store can create a custom menu for that specific location. Otherwise the menu is gonna be locked. Um, unless you do wanna do that, then you could just have one menu. So once you've set everything up on Gloria Food, then if you wanna add the button on your website, you need to turn on the Elementor page builder. And what you could do is you can drag in the Gloria Food widget, the ordering widget, and then we can actually click into it. So here we can actually select the restaurant. So for example, this is the old restaurant, okay? And if we want the new restaurant, then we could do something like just duplicate it. And then over here, click on it, and then we can select the new restaurant. Okay, so here we might need to change the name. So order from new, and then this one could be like order from old. Okay, so it might be order from location and this one might be order from location, so it's different. So once you've actually done that, you can click on update. So let's just say we close and view the page. So right now, this is the old menu. If we click on it, then it's gonna connect us with the old menu and the old location and everything is gonna be pushed through into your old store like that, right? And then over here from your new menu, you can click into it. So I haven't actually finished this menu yet, but it's gonna be at your uh, new location over here, right? And everything is gonna be um, different. If you do want something like to drop down, maybe if you have more stores and you wanna create something custom, like this, for example, where people can click on select location and people can click on whichever one that they wanna order from, then what I do recommend is actually getting someone on Fiverr to create a custom solution. So the person I hired to, to set it up was uh, this person over here. I'll probably leave a link in the description. So you probably get in touch with them and um, design something custom for your own store. Perhaps it might be something like if they click over here, they can select you know which one they want to order from or which one they want to book a table for. And they'll basically create a custom solution. So I think this one cost me around $60. So I think you could probably get a good custom solution from around 50 to $100. And then they'll basically set it up on your website. I do have one last thing, okay? I know that this tutorial is very, very long, but I wanted to make, make it as complete as possible. So the last thing I wanna go through is that if you purchase your hosting and domain from Hostinger, is to go to your domains over here and click into your domain. And what I personally do recommend is actually enabling the who is privacy. I think it's an extra $5, but it does protect like your information, like your email address and contact number. And it's gonna hide those details. So marketing companies can't actually contact you and things like that. So I do actually recommend um, getting that for an extra $5. And yeah, so I think that is pretty much it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, drop it in the comment section below. I'll leave all the important links in the description as well so you can check those out. And yeah, so if you do like the video, make sure to give it a like and share it with your friends. Hopefully you guys really enjoyed the video and see you guys in the next video.